What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Snake Pit. This is episode 143 with Jose Herrera as a guest. He is the um, co-owner of the Culture Lounge and Brown Bird Studios as well as the owner of La Chavania Restaurant. And um, they are located at 151934th Street here in Lubbock, Texas, right next door to each other. And then on the other side is Riley and his studio. So go check him out. Go check out the restaurant. It is open from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Most days, I believe. Um, but I had a good time talking to him and talking about his journey opening up this restaurant and being a you know a young business owner and all of that. I'm having a good time talking to these guys, and I, I really like hearing about people's businesses and um, you know the entrepreneurs here in Lubbock. So if you are one, please hit me up. I'd love to have you on the podcast. That'd be amazing. It's kind of a new avenue I want to take with this podcast. And um, also, if you're new to the Snake Pit, please, please, please subscribe. It is absolutely free. It's easy, and it, it means the world to me, and it literally could change my life. So please, please, please subscribe, like, share, repost, you know, get involved. I'm on TikTok now. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I'm on everything. I'm on Patreon for $3 a month. Also, a new tier for $5 a month. You get the video, um, you know, relatively cheap. And it, it, it could change my life. So please uh, support the podcast, support La Chavania, support the Culture Lounge. Open mics on Thursday. This is Wednesday when this one comes out. So thank you guys, and I hope you enjoy. You remember? When, were you with us when we used to? I used to open up with the beer. Like, that's how I used to open, start it with the little crack of the beer. Mm-hmm. Little intro. Mm-hmm. I got a lot of things I need to work on, but we're here, man. We're live. What's going on, man? Not much. Just hanging out, having a good day off. Hell yeah. Appreciate you coming. Man, thanks for having me. I know me. you've been busy and shit. I have, but I've been wanting to come on here and I feel like it's a good time. So thanks for making the time. Over the camera and see that. Do you usually have Wednesday shows or do you have a set schedule? Yeah, now we're doing them on Mondays and Wednesdays. Oh, okay. And I find that to be a lot easier. And you edit like during the weekend or something? I don't really have a schedule when I do that. Because gotcha. right now, like I have, I just dropped one today, episode 140. And I have like three more. I need it. Well, when, when I'm done with this one, I'll have three more I need to gotcha. put out. So I just. Gotcha. And then like, I'm not a computer whiz or anything. So like whenever my, the memory of my laptop gets full, yeah. that's when I'm like, oh shit, I need to put more out. Hell yeah. Because then I can delete them and then just go on, you know? Yeah, I feel that. So, yeah. I'm with you. Yeah, scheduling is. I like the scheduling. I didn't think I would, but I really enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's, cool. That's cool. I mean, I know you work too, so I bet you. Yeah, luckily my job isn't too much. I hate doing computer stuff. I'm fucking. I hate it. <laughs> I, I I don't want to sound like I'm complaining, but yeah, I hate it too. Yeah. It's the worst part of this. That's probably like doing the studio stuff. I love it, yeah. but I'd rather like not be from, like I get tired of the computer. I'm just like, oh. I'll record somebody for like an hour, and after that, I'm just like, all right, all right, I'm tired. I'm getting a headache. But then there's like producers and engineers that love it. They could sit there all day and listen to music, listen to the same thing over and over and over, trying to get it right. I'm like, how? How?" (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I guess that's how you know they love it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Uh, man, so go ahead and tell us about you. What's, What's your... Um, What's your story looking like? Well, I mean, I, we'll get to where you are now, but let's, yeah. let's get a little background real quick. Well, um, I'm not from Texas. I was born in Kansas, so everybody always finds that interesting. Where at? Uh, Garden City. Oh, no shit. Yeah. I got I got family. I was going to say Garden City. That's crazy. Yeah, Hell yeah. I, I like that place. Shout out to Garden City. I haven't been in years, but I hear it's a little bit nicer than what it used to be. They got a little... Um, I went like two years ago. What's, what, what year are we in? Yeah, about two years ago, and they got, like, a really nice little water park in a hotel. Well, they got, like, the whole, um, I think, the community college that was, like, uh, on Netflix or something like that. GCU or whatever? Yeah, it was on Netflix. and No shit. Yeah, like, they're, uh, you know, I can't remember what that Netflix is called, but it's, like, that football one. And they cover, you know, a team that plays, I think it's, like, Dodge City. I think they cover Dodge City. Oh, okay. Um, But, yeah, shout out to Garden City. Hell yeah. Like you were born and raised there? Well, I was actually raised in Holcomb. 
but okay. I was born in Garden City just because I was the only hospital there. They're like 10 minutes away. Um, I don't know. I'm not the one to talk. I ain't been there in <laughs> fucking forever. But yeah, and um, so I was raised there or born there. Mm-hmm. I probably lived there until I was like five, came here because um, my dad found a job. There's a lot of traffic between here and there. I know a lot of people, not just family. Really? Just go back and forth. I'm still, I'm still, like when I meet somebody that knows what, who, where Garden City is, I'm like, oh shit, hell yeah, I'm amazed. I actually enjoyed that, that yeah. town. Yeah. So they got a like it's a weird town. Like they got a zoo. When's the last time you've been? It was about two years ago. Oh hell yeah! Yeah, it was, it, there was they got a zoo, and then they got like a, Garden City has a zoo. Yeah. No way. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> You haven't been there that long? I haven't been there since I was like maybe 12. <laughs> yeah, man. And I'm 28. Yeah. They got uh, a huge ass public pool. Like, it's weird. It's a weird little town. But yeah. Shout out to that place. Well, I really, I really, you know, have like, a, I feel like I have a connection there because my dad built, had a house built there. Oh, okay. So we have a house there. And I, I always find it like questionable just because I'm like, bro, you built a house there. And like a few years later, we move, you know, but. You know, I'm just like, you know, it's, you know, he was playing his cards. You know, that's what he yeah. was. He was good. You know, he was good. You know, he found a better job, whatever. So we moved here. I basically called his home. I started making music when I was like 15, 14. I literally had like a laptop and I would connect my rock band microphone because it was like one of the first USBs. So I connect my USB uh, to the laptop and I like had it all set up to my closet like over you know the bar where you hang your clothes on and i like had it taped on there and i would like had my booth so oh, i started yeah. i started re- cool. yeah i started recording like that um you know out of all my friends and peers i was like one of the first people to start really recording my own music and just doing doing stuff you know as far as like recording you know people were really re- it's like when it kind of first came out you know that you could do it yourself you know, from yeah, home. That's pretty cool. From home, all you need is a laptop, a microphone, and the program. Um, so started doing that, and I really enjoyed it. Did it for a while. Started taking it serious, doing shows, um, booking people. It's when I met GT Garza. Um, started booking GT Garza out here. Um, and it. Started, oh, so you've known him for a while. I've known him for. If COVID didn't happen, we would have probably went on tour for like the fifth time together. Oh um, no way! Yeah, but. Um, that's when COVID happened, so that's when that stopped. Oh, yeah. Shout out to you for making that happen, by the way. That was awesome. Yeah, they're uh, cool people, man. They are really they're... cool. That's what I like about it, man. I was surprised. Like, I, I, you know, I was drunk one day. I was like, I wonder if he'll respond. And I yeah. DM'd him. He just fucking hit me up. Like, yeah, that's what <laughs> I'm saying. They're like, they're kind of like us, you know, yeah. they're like normal people, you know. Yeah. Um, and he's just like, it's just cool to know people like that, you know. Yeah. Like, so yeah, I met him and I started kind of, that's when I started kind of stepping my feet into the promotion side. So I started like booking shows. So I, I've actually booked him first. Um, and I did that because that's when I was rapping. So I wanted to build a buzz. So I co-headlined the show and it, it was like such a success. And I saw the buzz that he created, you know, um, so I was like, man, let's just do this and let's just go to like Midland, Amarillo um abilene so we started touring so i started booking up for a tour and i just co-headlined the whole tour and and it was pretty cool man it's just cool like you know like we ran a merch table and met a lot of people and it's just like cool getting experience the rapper life you know touring and stuff um how long ago was that uh the first tour we did was probably like five years ago Okay. Um, the last tour we did probably like a year ago. Nice. A year ago, maybe I'm going on two. So we did about three, four rounds. Um, it was a lot of fun. You know, just getting experience that road life. Okay. We literally went back to back every day. So it'd be, you know, Thursday, Friday, <coughs> Saturday, Sunday, or something like that. No way. Um, and the most successful one we did. Excuse me was um when we went i think we did oh fuck i I know san antonio el paso so we started in el paso and then we came to lubbock and we went to san antonio and that was really cool because we did like some bad uh, like el paso had a badass venue um 
but they were all su- like a success you know a lot of people came and they were really fun you know i remember eating at some fancy ass restaurant like that was the first time i ever ate at a fancy ass restaurant stuff like that damn it dude, was you badass. get the whole life you get the whole experience huh? yeah 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 so that was like my rapper life and promoter life and you know after that i just kind of chilled out on making music i didn't really chill out i just didn't really put it out much because it costs a lot you know i'm um, trying to be artists it just costs a lot booking studio time videos promotions shows gas hotels all of that you know it's an investment it truly is man i i, I imagine so yeah i kind of got a. Uh, <clears throat> I kind of i feel like that's what i got over with and also i got kids you know i got a wife and kids so that was like my biggest thing is like like i like i'm a dad you know like i miss my kids you know what i'm saying like fuck you know i like Honestly, if you were to ask me to choose, I'd rather be with my kids than be out in San Antonio or, you know, every every other month. Oh, so while you were touring, you had you still had a family. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, I had kids when I was like eighteen. Also, oh, they're know. older now, huh? Oh uh, yeah, bit. they're uh, seven and nine. Oh shit. Yeah. So we, uh, me and my wife, been together since high school. So, yeah, we kind of, right after high school, I had I had my daughter. And then, you know, my son came along later on. But, but yeah, you know, I just wasn't really enjoying being away from them. And, you know, not, I just kind of got burnt out. I was like, I'd rather be at home. And <laughs> yeah. I could spend all this money, like, going to do shit with my kids. Or, you know, stuff like that. We could, like, I love to vacation, but it'd be better if I had my kids with me, so. Shout out to the vacation, man. Mm-hmm. Shout out to them. I'm excited. I'm interested. Like, so how did you get involved with like the culture lounge and your restaurant and okay and all of that? Like, you guys got like the perfect spot. Yeah, if people um, don't know it. Everybody like in that little area. No, you're all yeah. So all that actually started with Brownbird Studios. Yeah. So we we got Brownbird Studios probably like going on four years ago, um, and. You know, that's where I, kind of where it started. So the next year after that, we relocated and we moved Brownbird to another building, um, which is also off 34th and had a big old back space. So we turned that into the culture lounge. It was literally just like a big ass living room. It's kind of ghetto, but it was dope. Um, I don't know if you went to the old I never one. went to that one. No. Um, I had heard of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was pretty cool, though. It gave it like a house party feel. Um so that's when the culture lounge came about. And then the next year is when we moved over here to the um, restaurant location. Um, basically, that came about because we had to relo- relocate Brownbird Studios. Um, so we kind of just went to go look for places that were for rent. And we went down the street. And, like, that whole block was for rent. So me and my homie Mills, shout out to Mills, um, we went and checked out. Like, we just stopped and checked it out. And we're like, oh, shit, it's a restaurant. I wonder what this building is. And then the other building was badass, too. So we hit up the owners, whatever. And Mills took Mills took over one building. Um, and then I took over the restaurant just for the fact that it, uh, I've worked in food my whole life. Oh, okay. You know, I've worked in food my whole life. I started off um, at Sonic. Then I moved to Beef O'Brady's where I became like a manager. Is a different cat out there today? <laughs> yeah. it was an orange one today it's a white one sorry we had an orange one come out on monday now it's a fucking white one. Oh hell yeah shout out to them but yeah so yeah. you 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 you're familiar with the food industry yeah definitely definitely familiar um i left chick-fil-a i was like a director there uh and i left chick-fil-a because we found the restaurant and i was like man i could do the same shit i'm doing at chick-fil-a over here for myself and just get my mom's food because it's badass mexican food and, you know, that's basically what we did. Because it used to be a Mexican so, spot. Okay, so before we get into the restaurant, because um, uh, I'm just trying to like, because we've talked about the Culture Lounge a lot on this podcast. Shout out to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like them, again, your restaurant, and what, what was Creative Digital is now Riley's spot. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. It literally, like, in a fucking strip, it's, like, fucking badass. Like, I yeah. couldn't even believe, like, you guys all yeah. got lucky like that. Like, lucky, like, I'm, I don't like the word lucky, but that's yeah. just very lucky. Yeah, man, it was pretty cool. Like, we kind of saw it as an opportunity yeah. that we had to take, you know. Yes, like, there you go. Like, you know, Mills had this vision for Creative Digital, so there was that. You know, I kind of... I'm. I feel like I call myself an entrepreneur just because I, I just want to make money. So man. that. So the restaurant has always been. You've been working on it for a while. Mm. Since. Since March. Oh okay. Yeah. So we got it in March, and I had to replace tile literally by hand. Got my brother-in-law, and my dad to help me. Um, we opened it up in April or May. So it's still pretty brand new. It's like two or three months old. Yeah, um, super brand new. Yeah. And then the culture lounge, like we saw the room next door, so we're like, "Fuck, let's just split up the studio and the lounge." So we, that's what we did. We just split it up, um, and yeah, we put a stage in there. Just recently, we built a bar. Now we put a TV. Up. Oh, is there a bar in there now? Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. So uh, we don't have our alcohol license yet. You know, that's what we're working on. But yeah, we built a bar. Um, Can you get one? Yeah, it's cost like five thousand dollars. Well, I wasn't. I'm just saying, like near because you're near a school. That's a good question. I'm not sure now that you said that. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be like that. <laughs> now that you said that, I don't really, th- I don't really think of that. Well, does that stripe? Do you know right how there? far you have to be. I lied. That stripes right there sells alcohol. Yeah, I was yeah. saying there's like a there's Never like mind. a quick mart type shit right in front of it. And yeah, the little prawns. I mart. lied. I want to say they have beer there. They just sold a million dollar ticket. Is that where it was? I saw the news lady there yesterday, and I was like, "What is she doing?" I saw there? that. that- I didn't know where it was. Yeah, I was like, I was like, what happened? Why, why is she out here at nighttime? First of all, <laughs> yeah. you know, like it was fucking like 10 p.m. I was like, what are you doing out here? And yeah, I saw it this morning. I was like, hell yeah! I knew I should have bought a ticket from there. It's always that because I always go and they have signs. They're like, we sold this ticket. We sold. this So they've t-. sold tickets before. Yeah, this is probably like number five or six. Motherfuckers! So I was like, so if y'all ever need a ticket, go there. I guess we got to go there. Thirty fourth and. I yeah. feel like I remember those posters on that because my grandpa's house was like two blocks away from it. No, and for so real? we would always go to that little convenience store. Okay, never mind. So I guess you can. That's not because I've been to places where they're like, yeah, we can't sell alcohol because this is school. So I yeah. guess I guess that's not a problem. Well, I hope not. <laughs> it <laughs> does cost. It does cost a shitload. So, but if, that's a well, we'll that's get, a good excuse if we ever needed one. <laughs> is it like for both of your places, or you just? You were gonna do both of them? So I'll call it both? Um, I don't know. I haven't really decided that. Fucking dogs. Yeah, I have <laughs> right. I haven't really decided that yet, just because you know, I'm not sure. Yeah. You know, I just I don't want to say there's a conflict of interest, but I don't know. You know, because I'm a partial owner of the culture lounge, but I own the restaurant. But we could both sell alcohol, it's not a bad thing, because the culture lounge is not open every day. 24 mm-hmm. 7 whatever you know so but it would be two licenses well uh, now you guys know how much it costs i always wondered that mm-hmm. so there you go <laughs> yeah yeah it costs a shitload um i think the liquor license is like 15 <sighs> so, jesus i think that's why like um eskimo what's that place eskimo Hut? yeah yeah they sell like beer and wine because that's that one license Oh. And then there's a liquor license. So it's a beer and wine, and then there's a liquor license. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Texas so. Union, you get your shit together. But I'm like, God in damn. These, in these instances, anyways. So you've always, like, you've always been in the food, and you always know. Is that kind of like you, you, have you always had that thought in your head? Like, I'm going to open a restaurant? I feel like, yeah. 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 I, I actually want to open a food truck, but that's when we just kind of went to look around. We saw this restaurant, and then I talked to my mom, and she was super excited about it. So everything just kind of... She cooks there? Yeah, she does. Okay. Um, she, so basically she had to train me first, you know, because I didn't know how to cook everything. You know, I honestly didn't know how to cook anything. Um, I'm not, I don't really know how to cook Mexican food. So, you know, for the first like month after we technically were ready to go, she was there training uh, me and my wife. And um, yeah, and now it's now we know her recipes. So like she's just chilling. So it's pretty cool, you know. I plan to work hard and pay it back eventually. So what what is your restaurant called? I just want to get it right. If I La Chavena. What does that mean? Does that mean anything? the keyhole? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's my mom's old neighborhood in Juarez. 
oh, okay. that she grew up in. Yeah, so the keyhole. Yeah, so it was like the what, get, it was the ghetto. Oh, okay. Yeah, it it really kind of doesn't exist anymore. It's kind of all abandoned. But <clears throat> there's like a a water fountain that was like there in that neighborhood. It's like a big ass water fountain, and then like there's like five streets, five or four that connect there so it was like the ghetto and we were kind of thinking of names and i asked her about it and she's like what about la chavenia i was like that's a kind of badass name that is yeah so it's i was even like cool or not, you know, yeah cool. and there's a whole backstory to it so <laughs> i was like hell yeah let's do that you know so that's what we did i'm really happy about it you know kind of so like on opening day how many how many employees do you have is it just you everybody you know your family that no, working? I actually have um I actually have actual employees. My family I don't have any family that, that helps. Is that by so, choice? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's me and my wife and um and yeah, you know, I mean luckily my family has a job, you know, they all have jobs. Oh okay. you know, so it's you know, the only the next person that's probably gonna come work there would, would be my mom. You know, she's super excited to retire and just come work there. So um but yeah, it's really by choice, you know. I just really want to avoid any, any type of, you know, I just, I just don't want to have a work relationship with my family members. I feel that. You know, that. I don't want to have to hold anybody accountable for something or, or, you know, have to have a, like a boss to employee <laughs> conversation yeah. with my fam with my sister, you know? Yeah, I feel that. I don't know, man. Maybe that would be easier. Who knows? It, know. But don't get me wrong. Shout out to them because they do help whenever I need help. Because it's really hard to find employees lately. That's what I've heard. I've heard yeah. there's a lot of... Especially yeah. in, the, in the in the food service industry. I've heard there's a lot Especially, of, yeah. A lot of people... And it's even harder when you're local because you can't pay people exactly how you want to pay them or how they want to be paid. So it's like, fuck. You know, I got to find people that are just dedicated workers who just want to make some money, you know. I try to pay people a reasonable amount, you know, just because so, so I understand like, the in, whole... In that sense, do you have any, like... So the Chick Fil A background help you with like business wise, right? Money, oh yeah, money and mm -hmm. management, all that. Yeah, Chick Fil A was really cool. I give a huge shout out to Chick Fil A because they do have a good structure and uh, they teach you a lot of shit. So yeah, I learned a lot from them. Um, yeah, because I, I, that's why I'm, we've been lucky. We've had a lot of business owners recently, and I'm always interested how like they. It's been different industries too and i'm interested how that works that's why i'm like hell yeah, yeah. i want to hear all this I yeah it's cool that it's structure holds them all together that's yeah like literally what you just you know it's it's real you know what i'm saying structure. like that shit's real you know what i'm saying like if for anything like podcasts if you you know i feel like you know it's good to it's good to invest in yourself it's good to practice it's good to you know have a structure mm -hmm. um you know uh with anything you know that's kind of i feel like what chick-fil-a taught me they really mm -hmm. take they're really serious about it. They spend a lot of money just in training people. Oh, well, they're very well in training. You can tell just like they have a whole bunch of yeah, they have a whole bunch of classes and shit like just throughout. You know, like like all right, in order to get like a raise or some shit, you just, like got to read a book or you got to like do this. And don't get me wrong, it sounds kind of silly because you're like, don't you think they should get paid? for their performance instead of having to read them. But it's like, man, this really teaches you a lot of shit. If you, cause they have you listen to podcasts. They have you. It's no like, way. I was like, yeah, it's pretty badass. You know, it's like leadership podcasts and shit like that. I was like, I, I like that shit. You know, I'm like, I think it's, it could be helpful. What are some of the, like, what are some of the like more difficult things about owning a restaurant that people don't, un don't see and don't understand? What would you say, like, are some of the problems you've run into? You're like, what the fuck? You didn't even expect. Yeah, I think, like, man, equipment issues. You know, you have some equipment issues. Um, you know, for example, I've had a fridge that overfreezes every time. I'm like, shit, you know, if it overfreezes, then my product's going to go bad. You know, and that's what we paid for. So there's stuff like that. Um, what are other, you know... At the end of the day, we all know we got to pay taxes, but it, it still feels like it just hits you out of nowhere. Stuff like that, you know. Um, you know, it's really kind of the most simple things, you know, most common sense things, but it does, you know. Sometimes I'll walk in after it rained and I'll have something leaking. So I'm like, shit, now I got to call this person, you know. 
Coca-Cola won't deliver my sodas. So now I got to call them because they're taking forever and I'm having to go to the store and buy it. You know, it's the old classic. If it ain't one thing, it's another. If it ain't one thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I'm like, I know that on a small scale doing this, yeah. you know, doing this, you learn that. And that's what, that's what it is. I feel like in order for rest, as far as restaurant life, I can't really speak for other stuff, but for food life, you know, it's just being able to handle that shit, you know, being able to hand th- handle the one thing or another, you know, so it's been cool. I don't mind it. I'm, I'm used to it. So I feel like, I feel like it was a good decision. Yeah. Oh, shit. When you acquired the the building, did, did it already have like since it was already a restaurant? Did you already have stuff in there that you got, or did you have to start over? No, that was one thing that was really cool. It already had a lot of stuff. Yeah. So it had chairs, tables. The walls were already painted. Um, let me. Did you guys have a lot of the chairs from the culture lounge? Yeah, everything's I, already there. Because I remember like with Riley's show, there was a shitload of chairs that we yeah. had. Yeah, that one hallway. And like it, like rounded out in the hallway, like all those chairs that were like stacked. Yeah, we had to move those the first. Time. Yeah, we have a shitload of chairs. I'm like, fuck. We don't. And I and you know we've asked the owner if we could put them next door, and they're like, we already have a lot of chairs here, which they do. So I'm like, god damn, you know. Like, don't be wrong. Like, we have chairs, so you ain't got you ain't got to stand yeah. up. I just remember moving all those fucking chairs but, when Riley did his show. The yeah. First time. We, yeah, we kind of moved a shitload of them upstairs. So now our little room upstairs is like full of chairs. But, but yeah. Yeah, a lot of stuff was already there. Kitchen stuff was already there. Um, refrigerator, freezer, stove, flat top. Damn. The only thing I bought was a fryer. Um, a fridge. Which, what I mean fridge is like a small fridge. Um and just a bunch of small stuff, you know, glassware, silverware. Um, then you got to pay for your licenses, all that shit. Um, Is that a difficult process, like all that, um, like the permits and licenses? Is is it is it, is it kind of hard to get through all that, or is it- it's not hard at all? Um, it's just like I just researched it. You know, I just researched okay. like what do I need? Um, applied for it. A lot of it is free. The main thing I went for. I paid for, you know, just dropping knowledge on people. Yeah, I'm, is, well, yeah. I'm interested in knowing yeah, this hell shit. Yeah, <laughs> I paid. I went. I went to Ink File, so I went, you know, online legit website to get my business started as far as my LLC. Mm-hmm. Um, I put the restaurant under that, you know, so that was easy. Like I, sh- I recommend that just because it takes away a lot of pro- problems. You know, they basically send you the shit you have to finish. You know, they send you the files you have to complete. Um, so I did that. Um, the longest process was getting the actual inspector to come out. Was that because of COVID or just in that general? just, yeah, they're just behind. They're just shorthanded. Yeah. They don't have very many employees. I think that just in general, they don't employ that many employees, but, yeah. but yeah, that was the longest part for waiting for them. It was like a waiting game at that point. So I'm just like, shit, I should have called them a long time ago. That way they could get here by now, but. But yeah, at that point, I was just really eager to get open and. Oh, I bet, dude! I couldn't yeah, imagine that feeling. You know, uh, get food ordered, so that was cool. You know, definitely. So, r- regarding the menu, was was there some of the, some like, from the old restaurant your menu, or was it all your mom's re- recipes? Yeah, these are all my mom's recipes. Yeah, they're all hers. Um, it's basically stuff that we grew up eating. It's okay. kind of what I what I aimed for. So we have a small menu. Okay. But we also kind of have a variety of shit. So you could get a plate or you could get single items, you know, tacos, quesadillas, you know, your normal stuff. Um, but yeah, a lot of the plates that are, are basically stuff that we grew up eating, you know, um, like meatballs with rice, um, spicy meatballs, um, uh, carne con papa, meat and potato, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, I've seen that um, on the on the Facebook. Yes, sir. Um, what else? Um, you know, of course, enchiladas. But everything is everything is exactly how she would make it. So, so it wasn't uh, hard at all to decide what we wanted. I want to add more stuff, but it just, you know, we're kind of small. Our freezer and fridge isn't that big. I can't hold a bunch of shit in there, you know, stuff like that. But. But it's cool to have a 
variety of stuff. And every every once in a while, we try to add some stuff. You know, like this past month, we did like Doritos nachos. You know, wasn't that hard, you know, to hold stuff like that. Hell yeah. Kind of gives it like, again, that mom and pop feel. Yeah, like we comfort, like, comfort. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mom and pop feel. And we also try to give it a new feel. You know, we have like loaded fries and shit, you know. You know, that's something we didn't grow up eating, but it's really popular, you know, especially for younger, younger people. Um, so, yeah, it's been it's been cool. Do you do, do, you do deliveries? We just started delivery. Okay. So we should be on DoorDash now. Um, so you can like, go on our website and select delivery. Um, and we're also going to be on Grubhub like pretty soon. Hell yeah. So, yeah, trying to trying to get on as many platforms as we can. You know, so people can order food. So, if you're on Grubhub, DoorDash. <laughs> there you go, there. people. Do it. Fuck it. Support your local restaurants, man. Support local business. It's fun, man. I, I'm enjoying it. I'm and enjoying what days it. are y'all open? We're open Monday. Okay, the only days we're closed is Wednesday. Uh, Monday through Friday, we're open 11 to 2 and 5 to 8. Eventually, we're going to open up 11 to 8. Okay. Um, right now, it's just, you know, taking that small break just because we don't have... Um, I just knew it was going to happen. <laughs> we don't have quite as many employees as we want. And we can't pay people as much as we want. So, we have to take care of labor. So, yeah. Monday through Friday, 11 to 2, 5 to 8. Um, weekends were open 11 to 8 Sunday 11 to 3 um, so yeah basically open every day just watch out for that 2 to 5 but yeah eventually gonna open up every day so maybe by the time this comes out we'll be open um, every day 11 to 8 god damn that's yeah so <laughs> yeah, so I, cool. I, I know like I've, I don't like mean to but I've seen you talk about it on Facebook, how, you know, you get, you, you kind of get a little overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And I understand that. That's a little fucking lot, mm -hmm. especially starting. Like, how do you, what do you do to, like, kind of mentally separate yourself from all that and take a break and, like, focus, especially with the family and kids and shit? Yeah. What, what are you doing? Or, or are you even, like, taking care of your mental like that? Yeah, I try to chill. You know, I find a lot of peace in chilling with the family. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like. Oh, okay. Every once in a while, me and my wife will just be like, all right, today let's not talk about work. You know, let's just, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but also, you know, in all honesty, I smoke a lot of weed. Um, so, you know, I find a lot of peace in that. I've been doing smoking since I was a kid. So, to me, it's just like a thing. So, yeah, I kind of, you know, I'm pretty, pretty mellowed out for the most part, you know. So... Yeah, that's kind of how I chill out. That yeah, weed, that's what we, what we were talking about with Riley. Mm -hmm. Weed saves a lot of people's lives, man. Like, <laughs> have you ever seen that meme of that, like, older man? He's like, that's why I be smoking this weed, so I don't fuck y'all up. <laughs> no, I've never seen it's that really, It's really funny. It's really <laughs> fucking funny, but I'm like, man, it's like truth. I, you know? I just feel like weed just helps me, like, just rationalize things a little yeah. bit, like, slower. Because it's just like... <laughs> It's so easy just to like react on impulse or just to kind of freak out or to like yeah. let anxiety just take over. But I feel like weed just kind of slows you down a little bit. Yeah. Where it's just You just kind of accept, okay, this is happening yeah. or it is what it is. Now we just got to deal with it. We just got to fix it. You know yeah. what I mean? Especially like in your position, like owning a business, mm -hmm. like I help run a salon, you yeah. know? So it's just like there are fucking days where it's just stressful like just randomly something fucks up that never fucks up or yeah. randomly your wi-fi is down and you can't check out clients you yeah, know exactly and it's just kind of one of those like you know what okay this is just happening and yeah. what you do is just call it <laughs> you know like, and you just kind of have to deal with it That's, speaking, speaking yeah. on that like nothing really prepares you for that no. but how do you prepare for that um you just got to keep cool you know i mean how do you prepare for it Cause I feel like it, it, like again, like I understand that because shit happens here, and I'm like, yeah. and I have the least control of my fucking emotions. I, I, I get frustrated yeah. easy. That's a good and question. I'm just like, damn. But I, I guess over time it gets easier. I guess that, but yeah. for me it's just you just go through it. Well, see, that's another you, thing. You know, I mean, I guess I don't really have an answer for that because I also do get, I, I get frustrated quickly. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like people tell me I'm really hard on on everybody. You know, so. 
I feel like that's just me. Unfortunately, it's how my dad was, you know, he's, he's a hard ass. That's how I would be. Shit. You know, so, you know, that's basically, you know, I, I keep quiet, keep it for myself, but every once in a while, you know, I feel like everybody gets frustrated. Um, and I feel like if I didn't smoke, I'd get a lot more frustrated. Um, but you know, I don't know how to, how to really prepare for that. You know, I mean, as far as I've learned you know, and that, another thing, shout out to Chick-fil-A. You know, you just got to keep cool. And that, one thing at Chick-fil-A, it sounds stupid, but if you're working in the kitchen, a lot of things they taught us is it's just chicken. If you burn the shit, it's just chicken. You know, like it doesn't really matter. It's not a big deal. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you're going to get frustrated because now you're going to have customers waiting on something, whatever. But I try to carry that same mentality. You know what I'm saying? That's like, a good mentality. Like, the, like it just happens. You know, shit's going to happen. I'm still working on it now as much as I can because I still get frustrated. I think that's actually a great mentality because that can apply to a lot of things in life. Like, it's just, it just happens, <laughs> you know? Your internet goes out. It's just the internet, you know? Like, oh, well. You know what? You know Because what? that's going back to problems, like you said. That's one of them is yeah. but also your it's internet like going Everything out. is fixable. It's like, fuck. You know, like is. everything really can be fixed. It can be. So It can be. Anything. Yeah. I just keep thinking about, this is an extreme, but like the podcast with the North Korean. Mm-hmm. Like shit could be a lot worse. Oh, <laughs> it could be a lot worse for a lot. It's a lot worse for a lot of other people. Even mm-hmm. in the smallest things for me, that's how I say, I try to remind myself like, you're alive, you're healthy, you're, you're good, yeah. you're good. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work out. Because yeah. I've had a lot of fucking technical problems with this goddamn podcast, actually, speaking of which, this last week. Sorry mm. for you guys. That's why the shit's been all fucked up. But I'm just like, fuck, dude. This is a... I can like for all. I guess all of us here could, you know, we all want the best for our clients. Yeah. Or whoever they are, you know, the hair, the people eating the food, the people, the viewers. Listening. The, yeah. Yeah, the viewers, like, you want the fucking best. So it, exactly. It is, like, you get, you get frustrated, you're like, fuck. And at that point, <laughs> I like to say that we're in the customer service business. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just because we're kind of, you're entertaining people, you know? You need them to be entertained or, you know, yeah, I need them tuned to like in. Shit, yeah. You know, you need them to tune in. And and I feel like that's what I like to tell a lot of my friends is, bro, we're just in the customer service business. Just put your fake smile on and let's get it done. And once closing time ends, you know. Have you had to deal with shitty customers yet? Um, I have, man. Already? One of the very first days that we opened, <laughs> literally, we're still training, still trying to get shit down. And this lady comes in and she's just tough, you know. I can't remember what she was doing from the beginning, but, you know, I like took her, I personally took her her food at first. And she's like, um, can I give me some more sauce, bro? I was like, okay. And this is like a older, like, I feel like 40 year old lady. I was like, all right, cool, whatever, you know. So I go back, get her some more sauce. And I guess she wasn't enjoying her food. Um, and she started telling customers, like, go to Montelongos instead. I was like, what kind of shit is that, you know? Dude, what the hell? So, but we were really busy because we just opened, yeah. you know. So I, I didn't get, you know, had I had a chance, I would probably been like, you know, I'll pay for your meal. Could you please leave? That way you're not disturbing my customers. But... I feel like other than that, we hadn't had any shitty customers come in. You know, we've had some mediocre reviews. Some, you know, it's weird. Some people like their enchiladas. Some people don't like them. You know, it just kind of comes to... Yeah, people are weird with food. It just comes to self-preference, you know? I mean, and I don't blame them. I don't blame them. You know, my thing is, if you don't like your food, let us know and we'll give you something else. Yeah. Because I want you to leave happy. You came here to eat. You didn't come here to fucking just try the food and talk shit on it. You know, you came here to eat, get full, you know, so I want you to come, you know, if you don't like your meal and you may just not like it, you know, maybe something you do usually, you may just not like this flavor. So I'm like, yo, just let us know and we'll replace it for you and you'll be full. And so, cause like you said, you know, I just want people to be happy. Man, that's pretty fucked up. I never heard some shit like that. That's fucked up. Yeah, that's I was fucked like, up AF. I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> fuck. This probably literally was my reaction when I was back there cooking this shit. They're like, "Hey, there, this lady's out here telling people to go eat." I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> but it happens. You're gonna. Some people are just gonna be not very happy. 
Yep, some people are just a grouch, aren't they? Every once in a while you get a little vibe and you're just like, man, they're just came in here mad already or... Mm-hmm. But it happens, you know. Hopefully she comes back or already came back and enjoyed something. I don't know. If you're listening, give them another chance. Come eat. <laughs> I got you for free. <laughs> so, yeah, it's cool, though. What if she's like a secret Montelongos employee? That's what I, I was thinking just now. Like, what if that's her job is to go? Man, Loki, I hired this. All right. I'm, you know, we're just I talking. I mean, it's just business. That's kind of how you learn. You know, you look at other businesses and how they operate. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we, man, well, we heard this one girl, and I'm starting to get a vibe because she worked at this other place. I'm going to say no names. No, I don't know. But she worked at this other place. Uh-huh. She worked at this other place, you know, she had told us, and uh, and whatever. She had. She said she had a quiz. She was a really good employee, so I'm not, you know, she, shout out to her. She was really good. Um, but she said she had to leave, and then later on we saw her at that other place. I was like, man, I'm starting to get spy vibes. Like maybe she was coming to spy on her shit. I was like, so if you're, I'm on to you. Maybe, man. May, I mean, I would. I don't know. I wouldn't put it past like. I was like, man, is it really out here like that? Competitive. I don't know. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, like I'm still stepping in the game in the restaurant game. I was like, man, is it is it out here like that? I was like, shit. Dude, that'd be crazy so, if that's the case. I know, right? <laughs> oh, like, fuck. But shout out to all the other restaurants because <laughs> I ain't hate on nobody. No, man. We all, we all, there's enough enough business for everybody. That's one of the one of the interesting things about doing this. Like, my attitude has changed because it's, there's a lot, you know, I remember a lot of podcasts, there's a lot of rappers, mm-hmm. there's a lot of people who uh-huh. do hair, there's uh-huh. a lot of restaurants. We can all, you know, you know, maybe one, what doesn't work for them can work for you. Exactly. Maybe you're not feeling that place today. You can go eat here. Exactly. And like, don't we all wish like, what is that one thing I could start that nobody knows? Like, like damn, like some Shark Tank shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, cause I don't know. It's just crazy how life is now. There's just so much money everywhere, and I'm just like, people are just spending it. There's, Shout out to Rihanna. Shout out to Rihanna. She just turned, she just became a billionaire. She did. Love her. That's awesome. <laughs> it's possible, people. It's possible, you know. And yeah, I'm just like shit. You know, I guess that's what this world revolves around. So we're gonna yes, sir. revolves around. So we're gonna get to it. Well, that's one of the cool things about like GT Guard. Speaking of him, you know, he did that brown by honor, and he's mm-hmm. like fuck with a Mexican. I like that. Yeah. Like that, you know, yeah, that's one thing that he's always... I feel like he should be super... Like, shout out to GT Garza just because, to me, he's not an A-lister or B-lister, you know what I'm saying? People really don't consider him. If you were to ask the regular person, nobody knows who he is. But he has his fan base, and he knows where he's it's at. He's got a fan base. I don't say he, that. Yeah, he knows where it's at, you know? And, and he makes a living by his music and... You know, he's low key, you know, he signed Crystal Pop in and she's out here making moves now, huge moves. You know what I'm saying? A shout out to that too. And you know, it's just cool that we're able to meet him and learn. <laughs> Those dogs. These stupid motherfucking neighbors. <coughs> Hell yeah. He's got new neighbors. I think that's who those dogs are. Oh fuck. Take your dogs inside, people, damn it. Right. <laughs> but yeah, shout out to shout out to them, man. He, he's cool. He's he's very he's very inspirational. Yeah, he always has a good little you know. little plan for every song or album. Always has a good little game plan. So shout out to him. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, I don't. I never really thought it to be like. Of course, I'm. It's, it's, it's cool to be Mexican and all that. I'm happy for it. But then he made me even more proud. Like he's yeah. he's, he's doing it, man. I'm like fuck yeah, dude. Man, for real, <laughs> you know, I feel yeah. like sometimes, you know, I feel like sometimes we could be forgotten about, you know, we're not mentioned. A lot of times, I feel like a lot of times it's like, you know, I'm not going to say it, I'm gonna, you know, <laughs> I'll fucking but, say it, that's why yeah. I never really was like, you know, whatever, you know, I don't wear that shit like I'm, a, you, know, you know, but not, but after that podcast and after, you know, him, like, oh, yeah. shit, man, we do got a little, little something going. Yeah, we definitely got some shit going on, yeah. so. You know, definitely, you know, I feel like we just got to keep going, keep pushing all of us, you know, shout out to our people. How do you feel about like the future of Lubbock as a whole? 
Damn, this thing is blowing a lot of smoke. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, nah, you're good. Look at that, people. I feel like, um, oh, man. Just like culture and business. As far as business, I'm pretty sure they're going to be okay just because, you know, it's moving south or whatever. Bit, well, just business seems to be booming here. Like, you know. Yeah, it's definitely going up. Definitely going up. I was actually been thinking about the action uh, last week, this past week, that I feel like, you know, the east side and the north side are kind of forgotten about, you know, yeah, and kind of have. And we know we know this because we've seen it on the news. We've seen it online, you know, but I'm just like, shit, man, that's for real. They're out here building so much and it looks so nice over here and they can't even fucking do something right here. Or, you know, I'm just like, it's not growing on that side. It's going to be forgotten about. So I wonder how it's going to look. Yeah, it is. It's very much moving south. Yeah, you know, and don't get me wrong. I'm going to try to hop in <laughs> and get in there and get some of that get some of that bread. But, you know, it'd be nice. Yeah, because um, we, we, I work a lot. That's all I spend my time out is South, South Lubbock. Mm -hmm. There's really not many Mexican restaurants. No? At all. Mm. I don't know. I can't think of one. If yeah. you know, please hit me up. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's no, like, you know, you again, it's like the e a little bit of east side and the north side where yeah. all the fucking good places are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I feel like there's a lot to fucking, like, right now it's up for grabs. A lot of shit is up for grabs going south because, you know, there's not very much there. And you could go pretty far out because it's going to get out there. You know, it's going to get out there eventually, but... But yeah, it's cool over there. I don't really get out there too much unless I'm hungry and want to try something I haven't tried yet. So I go out to South Lubbock. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's, it's new. Everybody likes the new. So whatever. Yeah. How do you, how do you, so how do you feel about like? Are you like keeping up with like the rappers, the music? You, how Here you feeling? About, yeah. How are you feeling about that right now? Oh uh, man, I feel like there's a ton of talent. You know, I feel like the city of Lubbock doesn't know how many rappers there are. Cause there's a shitload of them. <laughs> you know, I almost want to say there's too many. Yeah. So <laughs> you know, you know, we get a lot that come to Brownbird. If you need to record, come to Brownbird Studios. Um, holla at us. Facebook, Where's that at? Facebook, Instagram. Right now, we actually remodeled our homie Duke, which he also owns shout it. Um, shout out to Duke. Um, we we renovated his back house. So his back house is a studio, and it's pretty dope. It's a whole vibe, you know. It's not really a house feel or nothing like that. It's completely separated from the house, and you know, yeah, we basically take in just private sessions. Just hit us up, but yeah, Duke's been holding it down at the studio, and uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, artists that come out there. Um, they're really talented, and it's, what's crazy about it is lately I've been so busy at the restaurant that, like, I don't really know a lot of them. Um, like, I'll hear their name or something, but I don't know their face, you know, apart from back in the day where I was uh, actually helping record. I was doing sessions and stuff like that, so I was able to meet these people. But, yeah, man, there's a, there's a lot of artists out here. They go hard. We do open mics on Thursdays at That's, the lounge. That is the fucking coolest thing ever. Yeah. So every Thursday, what we kind of recommend for Thursdays is like, come practice your shit. That's I, me, Vari, and Key. It's the gym. Yeah, it's, it's the gym. The, it's, it's the gym. You go work out. Exactly. That's what basically we're trying to do. And and if somebody happened to be off that day and wanted to come kick it, they're gonna be watching it's like we haven't we haven't got a chance yet but that's one of the reasons why we do monday wednesday so we can go out on the yeah. thursday a lot of things happen thursday a lot of, things happen, yeah. of course the weekend and there's a lot of open mics going yeah. on shout out uh, to all of them but yeah if you get a chance you know come out to the lounge you know it's byob and uh we get a lot of cool people that come out we get um poets comedians, comedians. Yeah. um and and artists i really like i i really like the culture lounge it's, it's always been a good vibe it's just a vibe. It has been yeah. such. A, it's never been yeah. no, because you know, you know, I, 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 I'm my fault. I fall into the bullshit on social media. But it, when you're there, it's never bullshit. It's yeah. always cool. People are. I've exactly. never felt. I've never felt weird. I've never felt, you yeah. know, like somebody wants to fuck me up. No, because exactly. I talk a lot of shit. I like to talk shit, but whatever. <laughs> but you know, I've always like, damn, and, and it's cool to like that. There's a place like the cultural lines that you can showcase your stuff, and I think like. I, I encourage a lot of people to do it because yeah. there's only one way to get better, and that's just by going out and doing it. 
Yeah, 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 exactly. And and you're gonna get all of it. That's kind of why we named it the Culture Lounge. Yeah. You know, it's just it's just a family. That's what we want it to be. Mm-hmm. Even if you're new, even if you're new, man, we just want you to come kick it and hang out and. You know, it's all love. You know, there's some events where we're like, do we even need security? Like, we fucking know everybody that's about to come who's going to be here. So, you know, at that point, we're just like, yeah, we're chilling. We'll be security, if anything. Yeah. You know, there's nothing going to pop off or whatever. But, but yeah, man, that's kind of what we went for even at the first lounge. Is we just want a vibe, a good vibe, you know. Everybody just have a good time. You know, that's really it's all, all it's for. If we could, we could... Make it 420 friendly all day. But if it were to <laughs> get past, it would be a lot better. Um, are you, so you guys have a pretty good relationship with the owner of, of those buildings? Yeah, we do. We do. Yeah, they're very good people. The owners of the restaurant. So the restaurant used to be called La Fiesta. Um, I actually never been there. Um, but it was supposedly there for about 40 to 50 mm-hmm. years. Um, so those owners are basically what, you know, they, they basically embedded the, the spot, you know, they created next door, the lounge. So I, th- if I'm correct, that whole thing used to be a restaurant. Okay. Um, so from the lounge, the restaurant and creative digital, I believe it used to be all a restaurant. Um, but I could be wrong, but. But yeah, their parents are the ones who owned it. Um, and they passed away, and now the the their kids own it. You know, so I want to say where the culture lounge is. That used to be a dance hall. Y- yes, yeah. They would have like I remember they yeah. would just have. Like, would you go things. there? No, I used to stay with my grandpa a lot. Yeah, and you're right. I just always remember. Like you would see like just mm-hmm. quinceaneras going on and stuff like that. And there was a restaurant. Yeah. I remember the I, sign specifically. And they're, they're signs. They have two signs there. And I asked them if I could buy one and they told me no. <laughs> like, Is it the sign where it has like the little dancers? Yes, the, the lady. Oh my God. Yes. It's, oh, it's in the culture the lounge. Yeah. Oh. It's in the stairway case. Oh. Um, in the stairway room. But, but yeah, it's fucking dope. I mean, I'm just like, man, there's a whole bunch of history there. So I was like, man, I wish I could meet the owner. You know, I wish I could meet the man himself. Yeah. You know, but, you know, he passed away. Yeah, because that is a little, a bit of an older part of Lubbock. So mm-hmm. I imagine there's a lot of history in that, yeah. in that area. Yeah. So it's cool to meet them. My mom's yeah. actually really good friends with one of their daughters, you know, really good friends. So oh, nice. I kind of know him personally. Um, and I just met the other side of the family. So it's pretty dope, man. They're, they're really good people. Shout yeah. out to them. Really good people. Yeah. I mean, I just, I keep, I me mean, and, Again, I you know I, I like to speak things out so they happen. Me and this guy Chris Vargas and Bradley, who was supposed to be here, <laughs> unfortunately he couldn't. Um, we just been talking about like things are lining up here, man. I just think the stars are starting to align here. Yeah. It's weird. It's just, yeah. I, I have a weird feeling about love in the next few years and with the culture, like everything, not just rap. You know, yeah. hopefully the comedy. You know everything. It's. It's a lot of, there's a lot of fucking talent here. Yeah. There's a lot of fucking talent. And um, it's, yeah, somebody's going to boom. <laughs> someone. <laughs> it's been like, that. I don't even, I mean, yeah, someone has to, yeah. right? But I, I feel like it's, it's going to be like a lot. Yeah. It's going to be a lot. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, uh, I feel like there's too many for there not to be. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Some sort of thing happened just because, yeah, man, there's a lot of, inter- there's a lot of entertainers just in general. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot Shout going. out to Rafa, right? Is it his name? Rafa, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to Rafa. yeah, he's a badass. Yeah, he he's is. A, I like him. Very good people. I met him at the cultural. I'm speaking of yeah, words. yeah, he's a he's an avid um, customer, I guess you could say, or entertainer that shows up. I've never really asked you that. How do you feel about what's going on in Lebanon? Do you even pay attention? Do you, do you feel like there's something going on? I do. Um, I don't know. I just kind of think about it as in like I hear. I sit here and I listen to everybody talk about, you know, the growth of Lubbock and like, the potential it has. And it just kind of is like, I feel like eventually like Lubbock will have like known icons that are from here besides just like Buddy Holly. You know what I mean? Like, like there will be like music I, icons. Well, I, I don't really doubt. I don't icons, really, you know, I don't really doubt that. And I think like a lot of places could have that. I just would, what I would hope and I'm, I'm, 
I'm working towards, because that's what I'm doing, is they all stay here. Mm-hmm. And I hope we, we, it stays here and it mm-hmm. makes like people want to come here. Exactly. Well, as shitty as this Just, fucking town is, I'll say it first, it's still fucking great. <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, with more of like that kind of like buzz, it's only going to get better. You know, yeah. like more stuff just will come to the city and it'll just become more of just a bigger city. I don't think it'll it'll ever become like a San Antonio sized city. Oh, no. Yeah. But it'll definitely just get like full. Yeah. And it'll just become like a major uh, Texas city. Because I'm buzzed and because I feel like saying it. Say it. It's like. You know, and I've been thinking about because I've heard about it recently because of YouTube. It's like you know, like grunge era in in Seattle in that area mm-hmm. in the nineties. That's what I would hope something like that happens here, where it's like, what the fuck, something crazy like a fucking <laughs> cultural like phenomenon happened in Lubbock, Texas. Because dude, there's so many fucking people here that like, yeah. and they but they leave, you know, and then and then they become big and and you know, they have some sort of tie to Lubbock. It's weird, yeah. like because the more I do this, the more I hear about it. Exactly. I was like, whoa, why the fuck you come back over here and like let's like make something happen? Like, yeah, the fuck? Exactly. Like, like build something, yeah, put a building. I up. would hope something like that. Not like that. That's a fucking. That's like a once in a you know lifetime thing. I, I just was throwing that out there, but something like that I would hope. And I and again, I'm because I I'm so optimistic. I would I think like something like that could happen here. I wish we had like a real downtown. You know, I you know, there's I think we're missing yeah, a few things. Like shit. I think we're missing like a, a cool venue. Should be, shout out to Buddy Holly, but that's for like the superstars. Buddy Holly. Yeah. There's Charlie B's. <laughs> I shout out to them I um, like that place <laughs> how, What about that place that I haven't been I've never been to Charlie's How about that <laughs> one place Out of um, um Fuck That outdoor place With all the signs outside Oh uh, um, Cooks Headed towards Cooper Yeah Cooks, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cooks Garage Yeah that's Cooper, what yeah. Uh, A lot of people go out there Yeah that place yeah. Looks pretty cool Yeah, yeah so. Shout out to them But I agree though If we had like What do you mean Like a hard rock Or something like that oh. Even if I don't they just had like a more universal venue. Because I know like Buddy, like again, like the Buddy Holly Center obviously is going to bring people, but I think they're going to bring the best of the best. Of course. You know, if we had like a, like a, like a comedy, I think, mm. I think we're missing a comedy, like That'd be bad a ass. comedy club. Yes. I think we're missing like a really cool club where mm. like musicians who are making their way up can come here. Yeah. And, and like a cool like venue. I yeah. think that's what we're missing. For sure. I really do sure. think we're missing that. And and then I think like where everybody could showcase their shit because I think, you know, music is very important to Lubbock. Yeah, there's a lot of cool things that happen musically that came through Lubbock, mm-hmm. or that started in Lubbock. Shout out to Buddy Ollie. You know Elvis out here. Yeah, something like that. The and like the Cotton Club, the Cotton and it Club. burned down like twice. Yeah. yeah. I was like, what the That's fuck? Cooler place. I'm like, bro, like people should forget about that shit. I yeah, I'm just like I'm very optimistic. I I I, I mean I I speak partially for rap because I like them. They're very cool people. Yeah. But you hear about the bullshit and, and, the, and, the, and they just like implode from the inside. And that's very unfortunate. I'm and just the, like, man, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Some people are a little wild. Man. <laughs> yeah. Like, <sighs> I but I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 don't know. I, think, I think things are working in our favor for a lot of things. Like guys like you who are doing, you know, the restaurant, the culture lounge. And then Riley, who's right next to you. Shout out to yeah, Riley. Shout little, out to Riley. The little goofball. Yeah. Shout out to him. Love him. Riley, keep, keep coming in for that barbacoa. That's what he said. He likes it. That boy straight comes in almost every day. Shout out to him. Yeah. But yeah, no, man, it's been, it's been, it's a lot of fun, you know. And, you know, if I were to dream, I would say, like, I want to get the restaurant up and running and I want to get back into music. Not as far as me being an artist, but anything, you know, I wouldn't, like, it would be dope to have a venue, an actual venue. It would be dope to run another tour again and book somebody or, you know, I enjoy it. And, you know, you can make money doing it while you're enjoying it. You know, there's a reason why there's fucking promote, uh, uh, promotion managers and shit like that. Yeah, you know, I'm like just like, career. yeah, I'm like, God damn, you literally get money to fucking book shows. I'm like, hell yeah, I want to do that. Sounds fun. So, getting money, man. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. You know, that's that's on the agenda too. I, I want to ask: Are you? Did you play sports? Do I play them? Did you? Yeah, I played baseball. Did you play your whole life or something? Yeah, you know, we we were talking about that. Did we? Yeah, a little yeah. you fucker. We were talking about uh today. We were talking about um 
Yeah. Nolan Ryan. Yeah, we were talking about Nolan Ryan. Yeah, yeah. And then you commented about baseball on my post. Yeah. Not too long ago. I love right. baseball. Baseball is my goddamn favorite thing ever. Mm-hmm. My favorite sport anyway. You like other sports? I like them all. Oh, yeah. oh, I'll watch them. You like sports? I don't watch sports. No? No. <laughs> I, like... I used to play softball okay. when I was a kid. I just like competition. So I even like watching Olympics and shit. Shout out. Shout out to the Olympics. I love watching this shit. Like, I love to think, like, the thought of, like, these fucking people been training their whole life to play volleyball or water polo or fucking yeah. run. And they're from countries, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're probably just regular people in their country. And they get a shot to come out here. I was like, that's fucking crazy. They're out here repping. Yeah. And competing. I was like, that shit's dope. But I love sports. I love baseball. Did you play baseball? I did. I played my whole life. Hell yeah. Up until high school. Um, After high school, I didn't play anymore. But, yeah, I, I like it. I like going to the stadiums. I've been to the Colorado Rockies and the Astros and the Rangers. You've been to the new Ranger Stadium? Not the new one. No. Have you? No. No, I want to. I've been to the Rocky Stadium, but I haven't seen a game there. I I, I, I got there. to see a game when I was young. Yeah. It was fun. It was dope. But Yeah, we got we got lucky this year. We went to the the tech the regionals. Oh yeah. Oh, I think I saw that. Yeah. yeah. Did so, you went to both games or yeah. all three or I can't remember what it well, was? Well the ones before they lost. So the weekend before they lost, they yeah. were playing uh North Carolina, I want to say, and uh, UCLA. Mm, okay. And we, we were there. I was fucking drunk. <laughs> oh, man. I loved it. It was so fun, dude. Hell yeah. It's so fun. That's badass. Yeah. It's like a good base- time. Baseball is like, I'm looking forward to football. Get, yeah. Going over there and getting fucked up. Who's your favorite football team? I don't really have one. I'll have to say the Cowboys, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Just, yeah. just by default. I like the Steelers. Yeah. Yeah, that's my team. Big Steelers fan. There, there's, you know, they're... I'm but, surprised at how many Steeler fans there are here. I really will Steelers, say. I'll say that right now. <laughs> Steelers have a big fan base. They do. Yeah, they do. Just in general. Yeah. They'll, they'll fucking go to stadiums and be the away team and still get a shitload of fucking fans. Yeah. Make them seem like the home team. I'm like, goddamn. Yeah, football starts this week. I was supposed to go to my very first game um, versus the Cowboys. I had had tickets Tomorrow? and everything. No. Oh. I had tickets and everything, and then COVID happened. Oh, shit. For a regular season game. Oh, Because okay. they play every four years. So. Oh, the Steelers? Steelers and Cowboys oh, in okay. a regular season game. Oh, okay. They play every four years. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they play every preseason, but every in a regular season. And, and we had tickets to it. Oh, man. You know, I was like, fuck. <sighs> I have yet to be. Teams. I have yet to be to. Yet, yet to go to. A cowboy game at the stadium. I haven't been there yet. Yeah, I want to go. Just to, yeah. Plus, it's close by, but I feel like it's just kind of a iconic thing that stadium. Fuck yeah! So you have to go at least. Yeah, All the fights they have there and shit. <laughs> you know, and I don't know about none of that, but, but yeah. But yeah, that shit's pretty dope. I remember I went to a Monday night football game. That was the coolest thing ever. In Dallas or no, I was in Phoenix, the Cardinals. Oh, oh hell yeah. Yeah, man. Dude, that was awesome. I've never been to a football game like that. that Just was... like tech. Yeah. But Yeah, but we suck, so Yeah, we do. In football anyways. And hopefully we get up there, but would you go to a game? I'll go to a Cowboys game. My dad went a few years ago and he loved it. And my mom wants to plan like a trip eventually where like all of us go, like our sibling. Good old Richard. Good old Richard. Do y'all travel very much? No. Haven't been. Not as much as I'd like to. Not no. have but I'm I'm planning on like when shit really quits with COVID. Mm-hmm. We're going to well, I guess we're going to Denver next month. Yeah, mm-hmm. is that where we decided? Like either Denver or Santa Fe. That sounds fun. Oh uh, Santa you Fe. Know what I was I've been wanting to go there. In Denver? Okay, there is a horror bar. Oh, damn. See, there's more to do in Denver than there is Santa Fe. I would Are they coming scare you type no, shit? Like, just a it's, theme? Or it's, it's just it, themed? That's like the theme. Okay, okay. So it's like all these that's like dope. horror see, shit. See that? And then they also have a cat cafe over there that I wanted to go to. So it's like, I guess we are going to Denver. Oh, fuck you. They, they, they also have... Voodoo have, Donuts. I want to try Voodoo Donuts. Oh, I've, I've had Voodoo. This is pretty good. Well, they also have like a hotel where you could... Like they supply you with weed and stuff. Oh, well, I'm not. But it's expensive. Oh, I'm like, okay, what yeah. the fuck? I'm like, come on. I'll probably just do Airbnb. So, yeah, we just do that and just get 
I've gone, we, I've gone twice. Are you familiar with Meow Wolf? Uh, it sounds very familiar. What is it again? So, it's like an art installation museum in Santa Fe, New Mexico. It's like psychedelic as fuck. I don't know. It's, it's weird. Yeah, it's just like a weird ass like. Okay. Do you like Game house. of Thrones? Definitely heard of it. I didn't watch. No, no. Well, the, the guy who wrote the book, he's he had like a part in in this Meow Wolf thing. Mm-hmm. But they're like opening. They open together. one. Like Next a month. sixty a sixty million dollar building. I just saw it on Facebook today actually, and it was like a sixty million dollar Meow Wolf installation in Denver that opens up like a couple weeks before we were planning on going. So, so basically like a like an artist type thing or it's like a collaboration of artists. Like I kind of have a screen. So you like walk in, it's like a museum type shit? Yeah. I gotta see. I this. got like a little bit of a screenshot if you could see okay. those. If I had my laptop again, I fucked up doing that. You know, you can kind of see it. Yeah. Oh shit! Where is this at? That that one's gonna be in Denver. Oh yeah, it's Denver, a long way to sixty million. Like, look, see, this is the. Inside. That's fucking trippy. Oh yeah, you're on the Instagram. Wow. Just. Could you so imagine cool. being there? Hopefully, we will be there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Trying to make that a reality. <laughs> so what do you? Oh, that's fire! I wonder if they offer any stuff. You know. Like, like, I don't know. You I know, have no idea. Like, if this is anything like the one in Santa Fe, I want to say the one in Santa Fe, there's like a story of like a family that disappears or some shit. And so it's the, our installations are telling the story of the yeah. family oh, okay. that disappeared. So you're supposed to oh, figure shit. it out. So if it's anything like that, then the Colorado one will probably have some kind of like background story to kind of help lead you room to, like room to room. See, and that's what I'm saying. That's so different. I'm just like, that yeah. sounds so fun. And then, like, the horror theme bar, that's, that's something different. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. Colorado's a cool place. I've Colorado never been. I'm cool. so excited. No. I wanted to go, to go to just Colorado just to, like. You've never even been there? No. Oh, yeah, never. then we're going there. Are y'all driving or flying? Oh, I like driving. I'm going to drive. Yeah. <laughs> no, driving is definitely fun. I'm not a flyer. It's really beautiful, too. I'm not a flyer. That just scares me. It's not that. Flying. It's just, I guess it's cheaper. <laughs> right. No, it's definitely cheap. Well, Check out Southwest Airlines. I swear, no, no, uh, low key. Well, 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 also because I'm a pussy and I'm I'm scared of like COVID and like yeah. what's gonna be. Yeah. You know, you know, there might be a strike. You know, you seen that shit? Where yeah. People are all stranded. Who knows? Let's fucking drive. <laughs> I've been um, yeah, right. I just like ran. I I always look at flights. I just always just kind of look at pricing. And right now, there's like it's pretty cheap. Yeah, there's like yeah, round trip yeah. flights to like New York for like one seventy. But I'm, I'm also yeah. like I like want my car so I can do move around. For me and my kids, and my wife, all four of us, to go to New York and back, it's like four hundred seventy five dollars. You know, you you said the traveling thing. I think that's like now when but, things kind of go back to normal, if they do. Um, we we I mentioned it like I want to go to New York. Yeah. I would fly to yeah. New York. I'm not gonna fucking drive. Hell no. <laughs> but don't get me wrong. If I had to drive, I'd go through Philadelphia or some shit. Shit, that'd be cool as fuck driving. Yeah, hell yeah. But I don't know about driving in New York. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. (laughs) In like New York City. I don't even know if that's possible, (laughs) right? There are no lanes. Like, uh, there are lanes in like traffic. If I could speak out, like, if that's like, obviously we're going to go somewhere next month, but I would love to go to New York. I would love to go watch the Yankees. God damn it. One of my goals is to see the Red Sox in Fenway Park. I would love I hate the Red Sox because I'm a Yankees fan. I would love to go to Fenway. I'm God, I would. It. I would love to go to the. I would love to be on the Green Monster. Yeah. Exactly. I just <sighs> want to get on, bring on the Green Monster, <laughs> eat a hot dog. God, you know, watch a game. But yeah, drink a beer. I just saw um, they released again. Thanks, shout out to Facebook. They released the opening day scheduling for next year, and mm-hmm. um, I don't know who they're hosting, but the Rangers are gonna have opening day mm. here in, in Dallas, and I'm. I'm Look, try to go to I, that. I've been to one opening day. Really? Hell yeah. Yeah, it's that's badass. fucking badass. Who's calling me? I'm in a fucking interview. Answer. Say. I don't know. Two titty tone. Just who <laughs> I wanted to talk to. What are you guys doing, my nigga? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. You're on speaker on, on the podcast right now. I'm on the podcast right now? Yeah. Uh, Well, I need you to tell them, uh, Brown Bird, <laughs> Coach Lemons, uh, La Trivia, the Keyhole. <laughs> Uh, uh, Jason, uh, two what? Songs. All right. Sorry. Tell him I, every chance I get, I shout him out. All right. Yeah. Yeah. We already done dropped the culture lounge and everything. Hey, can, can you? Re- what? 
Can you reply a message to Rattlesnake for me? He's right here listening to you right now. I'm on your ass this weekend at Bird Pong. Oh, God. Is that happening this weekend? Yes. That's happening this weekend, and I'm on your ass, Rattlesnake. Oh, God. <laughs> tell him I said Beer pong Tell him I said I'll talk to him After this podcast <laughs> He said he'll talk to you After this podcast Man, Tell him to holler at me <laughs> Alright Tom <laughs> I'll hit you up After this podcast Alright Shout out to him Tom's so love, funny Love him Yeah Tom's hilarious man He holds it down At the lounge Good guy. But yeah, I, w- I would say one of the things that like I do get, I don't like to speak like that, but like one of the things that did come for me, you know, COVID really didn't exist in my world, especially in this side of the country, but it's like, I want to travel more mm-hmm. and I definitely want to go to New York. If you only had to go to one place, where would it go? If you only can only go to one place. Forever? Just to travel. Japan? Japan? I would love to go to Japan. Japan? I think that'd be cool. Or like just England. For sure. Yeah. We did a podcast, the one before this was no not the one before this with the guy who went to um, turkey and he went to he made me Kyrgyzstan. so eager to like want to find a country like that so like, to where um turkey yeah. and in europe and then asia was a, a country called Kyrgyzstan. yeah and he said well the f- it was fifteen hundred dollars to go there which of course is a little pricey but like everything else was cheap like twenty dollars mm. to, to fly that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's like so once we you were, get there. Yeah, it's like once you got to get there, but once you get there, it's, like, did oh, you yeah. see um, oh, his girlfriend? So she's still over there. Yeah. She got one of those vampire facials recently. Did, did you were you, did you watch that I at don't all follow, on her story? I don't, I don't follow her. Oh, okay. Well, anyways, <laughs> so she got this thing called like a vampire facial, where essentially like it Kim Kardashian gets it done. So it's like they like draw your blood they separate the plasma and the red blood cells and they re-inject the plasma under your face mm. and it makes your skin like, like bleed out. yeah it's supposed to like tighten your skin and shit like that that's like a service like worth like thousands of dollars and she paid 15 dollars over there yeah apparently, what the fuck? There. apparently that's like how like they're like going to mexico work. yeah to do yeah. some shit but like yeah, Way just, it's like going to Mexico. <laughs> yeah. If they you know how to do it. That shit scares me, though. I'm just like, because you hear stories of, like people going to Mexico and getting shit done. And, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. bro. Like, my, my mom goes to the dentist in Mexico, but don't get me wrong. That. I told you, a lot of people yeah. go over there. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's yeah, it's way fucking, like, she was telling me today, she's like, to get your teeth filled, she had a teeth filling. It's like $300 here, and in Mexico, it's like 50 bucks. I was like, bruh. Without what? saying too much, you're familiar with that. You know that. You know that. Mm-hmm. You know that. Life. She knows. Like, and, and you know my American mind and all that. Like I'm like, what the? F-? I know like, like, like young girls who go alone, just travel across the border, go get their shit, and then come back once a month. Yeah. You know they just go and do it. I'm like, damn. <laughs> I guess it's possible. Yeah, it definitely <laughs> is. But you hear like sad stories, like Kanye West's mom. You know what I'm saying? Oh like, yeah. Like she passed away from plastic surgery. And it, if it could happen to her, it could happen to anybody. But didn't she do that here? Yeah. Yeah. And it was like a it was crazy like Beverly ass, Hills or something. Like a crazy ass surgery though, right? I'm like, what the fuck? I think yeah, I don't know. she was. I don't know what happened. Lost down. Where she did down. Donda. It's sad. Donda. Yeah. <gasps> so sad. I'm a big Kanye fan. What's well, tomorrow? It's supposed to. You guys can talk about Kanye while I go piss. All right. Oh no. Bet. <laughs> What's your favorite Kanye West song? Mm. <laughs> It has to be something from Homecoming. Um, it's a good album. Yeah. It may be... Um, oh, shit. It may be, uh, it may be Homecoming with... Uh, what's his name from Maroon 5? Or Do you think about me now and then? Yes. Mm-hmm. That one. That's a badass song. That's probably one of my favorite Kanye songs. Uh, there's too many, though. I mean, I like his new stuff, too. Yeah. I even like some stuff from his Christian album, and I didn't listen to it just to... Yeah, just I to, listened to it once, and I mean, it just... One song stuck out to me, you know, and I really enjoyed it. But other than that, you know, I'm just like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I love he's him. A, yeah, he's a powerful guy. Like, I, I love him. Like, I truly, besides his other <laughs> yeah. like, crazy um, endeavors and stuff like that, like... I really do think he's like a songbird, and I I just love. He's a genius. Yeah, like I just love how he just does things. Like, I don't know. Yeah, he's a powerful guy. I really, I'm a huge Kanye fan. Um, I like Lil Wayne. 
You like Lil Wayne? I don't. It's you not that I don't like him. I just never got into him heavy mm-hmm. at all. Gotcha. I just I can tell you like songs that were like popular. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, for sure. I feel like sometimes I listen to Lil Wayne. I'm like, bro, how did you come up with this shit? <laughs> like, wow. But I like Wayne. I like, but yeah, big Kanye fan. I haven't really got into Kanye. I wish I could. I don't know why. I just can't. I love him. His music. I like him yeah. everywhere else. He's a fucking nut. I like his older music a lot. Way yeah. more. Way more than his newer stuff. Devil in a New Dress is my favorite Kanye yeah. song. And great. Runaway. Just that album. That my Beautiful album's... Dark Twisted Fantasy. I like Hell of a Life. Hell of whatever the that song. Mm-hmm. That's a fun, cool song. Do you have do you have a favorite hip hop artist? Hmm. Not really. I like Future. <laughs> I don't Future? know. I don't, yeah, okay. I, I, fucking, I love old Future. Okay. Yeah. No. A little Wayne. No. Did you say that? Huh? Did you say Wayne? Yeah, I love, uh, I love, yeah, uh, I love Wayne. Yes. He was kind of the first guy who introduced me to like just like being cool, if yeah. I could say so. I feel you. You know what I mean? Everything he did was fucking cool. Gotcha. And I just I was obsessed with I, yeah. I mean he's kinda of weird now. Yeah. But Yeah, he's a weird guy. <laughs> but yeah, his older music, same thing, was pretty God. cool. I haven't really got into anybody new. Neither. Honestly, lately I've been getting into like country and shit. Like acoustic stuff. Me too. Um, I've been listening to a lot of Johnny Cash lately. <laughs> you ever heard of Charlie Crockett? Mm-mm. I'm a big Charlie Crockett fan. Yeah, he's dope. Yeah, he's a he's like a country folk, blues kind of guy. And um, my wife actually surprised me with a was it a birthday gift or I can't remember what it was. <laughs> but yeah, we went to out to um, where the fuck did we go? Out there by San Antonio, um, New Braunfels. Okay. Yeah, we went to New Braunfels at the White river white house river or some shit like that and we saw him and it was pretty dope i was like hell yeah first time i seen him first time i really ever been to country other than that i would say rascal flats i took her to rascal flats back in the day <laughs> i don't know if we consider that country but but yeah i've been getting into that a lot it's pretty fire do you have music playing at your restaurant yeah we got a lot of cumbias yeah. and uh really just like Mexican music really not I'm not much of a Tejano type of guy I don't know if y'all listen to much I'll Mexican listen to it but again. I'm not like searching after it yeah um, but yeah 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 we got we got music playing try to keep it on Spotify that way we're paying our fees you know what I'm saying people are getting paid for their streams so <laughs> tune in so you can help pay <laughs> with streams <laughs> it's a hard life out here that shit counts man it does what do you use? What platform do you use? For what? Are you like on TuneCore or DistroKid or any stuff like that? Or, this? Huh? Yeah, for this. Oh, this is on Spotify. Yeah, I like Spotify. I don't know what any of that, what you just said is. Oh, okay. So <laughs> you, you like went directly through Spotify? Well, I, my, my uh, distributor goes through everything, like major, I guess. What distributor do you use? Spreaker. If you don't mind. It's called okay. Spreaker. See, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never, is it more of a podcast type thing? I, it is exactly oh, okay. what it is. Okay, okay. Yeah. So like DistroKid and whatever else I said is is more like music-wise. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. That's fire. Yeah, so I'm- So a- what else are you on? Like uh, all kinds of shit, technically? like. Basically, yeah. All the major ones. Yeah, because like the music stuff, when you submit your music, you're on like 60 stores. Mm. And it's like all across the country, the supposedly. The only one I, won't say I'm, I, I can say I'm not on is a Amazon podcast. For some Amazon. reason, it's hard to get on Amazon. It is. I don't and, know and, why. And I'm, I'll be real with you guys. I'm lazy and I don't want to put in like the <laughs> submit the application for it, which I imagine if I did, I would probably be on it. But, you know, whatever. And I'm kind of just scared, too, because I don't know if I trust it right now. I don't know why I'm saying that, but yeah, that's the only one like major. If people are like, "What?" I'm like Google Podcast, and yeah, I should get on spot, not Spotify. I should get on SoundCloud for some. I, I keep thinking that, but I'm not on that one. Well, they're starting to pay now. I think. Yeah. So you get on SoundCloud, but my distributor doesn't go, so I'd have to like upload it personally. Yeah. Over there, which would. SoundCloud's amazing. been around, but it's kind of that's the annoying part that it's separated from mm-hmm. everything. You have to do everything. They're starting to pay? I think they do. Nice. They pay. They monetize. I know there's a few people here who are pretty... Got a lot of streams on... on SoundCloud. I guess. That was my first platform, and it did pretty well for me. Yeah. 
So I don't see why not, but I believe that guy's Stony, if I must say so his name, if I must name drop. Stony? I think so. Is he popping on SoundCloud? I think so. Really? He showed you That's fire. Shout out to Stony. Yeah. That's but see I like that shit. I think. I don't know. Okay. I hope I won't tell him the truth. Hey, but there's a lot of people that are popping on SoundCloud, you know, and I'm all for real, real streams and shit like that. You know, mm. I hate when people pay for followers when they yeah. pay for shit. Oh, like, no, I would never do that. I'm just like, you know, I, I understand like what you're trying to do. Jen, yeah. Jen will call it out, so it's all good. You know, if you're lying, we'll know. <laughs> I, you know, I don't. I'm not hating on it, but I'm just like, you know, it's not really necessary. So you know, the natural, <laughs> you know, the natural views and shit like that. That shit's badass. That's where the money starts coming. So when they look at the the real, the real streams and views and all that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Do you ever plan on like doing stuff? Like, you ever plan on like live comedy or not live com like live podcast or, you know, like I've seen like a lot of podcasters are comedians. You know, have you ever planned on stuff like that? I, I wish I was funny. Or even just doing no, live shows. No, yeah, we, we we got some some live shows in the work. You know, we can talk about it off air, like with me and Riley want to do. Oh, that's cool. W which includes your restaurant. So, oh, shit. Yeah. So, oh, okay. You that's know, badass. And then, like, other places. We did one at the Bar PM, which wasn't live. But the that's one cool. I can say it was is with um, Scroll Young Cry Baby. She has a little, really cool venue. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with First Friday Art Trail. Yes. So, she has a, a venue out there. Oh, does she? So, we might. That's badass. She's doing a show on the 20th, I think. So. I've heard that she had a venue. I just didn't know where it was. With uh, Booga Bradshaw and a few other people. Hell yeah. And um, me and her, we're going to get together. We're going to do some, talk about like doing an actual event that's live at her place. So that I be think cool. I've only been to one live thing. And it was, you know, Sway? Mm-hmm. I've been to a Sway show on really? South by Southwest. Oh, shit. That's I got cool to meet place. Sway. I got a picture of him. It's pretty yeah. fire. I was like, hell yeah. That Anything. place, South by Southwest was fucking awesome. R.I.P. South by Southwest. Yeah, no, man. We, we used to go like almost every year and get an Airbnb and have a good time. Hell yeah. We would even, uh, we would even pay to be on shows sometimes. Yeah. It's a cool place to but perform. It was so fun. It is fucking amazing. Got to meet a lot of cool, I met Jack Harlow out there. Um, we hung out with Jack Harlow, like VIP type shit. Speaking of like South by Southwest and Trill Sammy, who's coming to Lubbock this seventh. Yes. My uncle was hanging out with him. With Trill Sammy? Yeah. In Houston? No, at South by Southwest a long time ago. Oh, hell like, yeah. Just, just looking like him and Russ. Oh, that's badass. Not them together, but my uncle was hanging out with Trill Sammy and then Russ, too. Before they were <laughs> like, you know, before they became big. It was like, that's badass. That's, yeah, that's where you hang out with I people. think Trill Sammy's been in Lubbock before. I think I've seen him once. Maybe. Um, I don't know. At the club. I can't remember what club it was, but. If, like that's what that's what i'm saying about south by southwest is you could literally like pop out and just see a famous did you ever person. go there no oh, i knew a girl fun. though fucking insane that saw post malone when he was like huh? very 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 exactly like white iverson he had just put it out yeah to the point to where he performed white iverson at the at the beginning of his set and the end because he didn't have enough songs and he literally was like i don't have enough songs made <laughs> <laughs> so he did it twice yeah that's fucking funny <laughs> We tried to see, uh, one time we tried to see Action Bronson, but they didn't let us in because we weren't 21. Oh, that would have been cool. Yeah. Man, one time I would me love my, to see him. One time me and my wife like saw like Swisher Sweet Party. And it was like free. Or I can remember if we had. That's where oh, I got I my shirt. Bro, <laughs> you went to one before? Yeah, that's where I got my shirt. Hell yeah. Yeah, I went to Swisher <laughs> Sweet Party. I don't know if you got to go up. Like when we went, there was a rooftop and we went up there. No, I don't think that was a And they gave you a coupon for free drink and they gave you a coupon for free uh, Swisher Sweets. And we literally got to get three each for free. It was like of their new their new release or whatever. But I was like, man, that's fucking like it was it's, all free. It's, it's fucking crazy. We yo. got to see Talib Kweli. Um, yeah, we got to see Talib Kweli. I'm trying to think. Um, who's the comedian? Ah, oh, what's his name? It was Hannibal Burris with somebody else. Mm. They were like performing. They and they were giving us out free sandwiches. Oh, and that's we didn't badass. get to go in again because we weren't 21. Same for the ASAP Rocky show. Oh, you saw ASAP? Oh, well, I mean, we met them, but we didn't get to see them. That's bad. Yeah. Dude, we met so many cool people there. It's exactly. Fucking, it's fucking, That's it, why I wish everybody would have enjoyed South by Southwest, that experience. Just because, yeah. like I said, you know, I met 
I met Cap G, um, Jack Harlow, um, <laughs> fuck, uh, to- uh, Toby Nwigwe. Um, you know, there's a lot of big people. I'm like, I was like, it's crazy. Yeah, now that I think yeah, about it, I was like, bro. Who you running into? I was like, it's before it got uh, huge. Yellow Wolf? Not Yellow Wolf. Yeah, Yellow Wolf? Uh, yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, I met him. The on white the sh- guy? Yeah, I met him on the street. He was fucking crazy. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. I like Yellow Wolf. Yeah, we saw two chains one time. That was cool. <laughs> oh, the ba- oh, funny story. We were walking down the street, me and my wife and like our friends. And like there was all these people huddled around this one guy wearing a diaper. We're like, who the fuck is this guy? And it was the baby. The guy that's in trouble right now. He was wearing a diaper? He was wearing a diaper. This is like when he was barely coming out. He was at South by Southwest just trying to create, you know, some buzz. And he was walking around in a fucking diaper. Grown man, just in a diaper. I was like, what's going on over here? And I like peeked over and I was like, what the fuck? I was like, I don't know. Some dude's wearing a diaper. And the next day I saw it on like XXL magazine or some shit online. And they're like, the baby was out of South by Southwest in a diaper. And now he's fucking huge. And now he's in trouble for shit. Saying Speaking shit. of like, he, one, we were, one time we were just walking around during the day and the Migos, yeah. that was before they were like huge. And they were like, we were trying, these group of people we were with kind of like, we're trying to get a picture with them. And they were like, everybody can get a picture with us, but it's 50 bucks. Uh, and we were yeah, like, yeah. yeah, fuck that. I have the pictures of me trying to sneak in to get a picture with them, man. And that's what, like, like, it was cool. <laughs> they had, like, a fucking SWAT team of security guards and shit. They, that was, like, right before they, like, really blew up. Man, shout out to my sister, but she got, like, um, bodied. I don't know what you were saying. I don't want to say beat up, but she got shoved around by T-Pain's security. <laughs> But my sister's funny. Shout out to you. She's she's funny. She gets she's a little wild. She gets she has fun. <laughs> and uh I remember she had told me that story. I was like, yeah, what? I, wish, I was I like wish, I was like, how the fuck that happened? I think people who were there understand those stories, but like if you weren't and you don't understand like the realness yeah. of South by because it was fucking crazy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was so much fun. You just go to a bar, you see some and then you go down Sixth Street, you see somebody famous, and then go to another bar, Man, show. I have, I, one time I paid to be on a show at South by Southwest. This is when I'm trying to get myself out there. You know what I'm saying? And I swear, like, the venue was fucking full. I was like, oh, shit. Like, I got footage of it. You know, it was a full bar. And there was, like, a line outside and shit. I was like, oh, god damn. Like, at the time, I'm like, what did I get myself into? You know, like, this place is fucking full. But it was dope. Like, that was the fullest venue I've ever done of course i paid to be i had to pay to be on the show yeah but man it was dope it was fun doing it i wish south by southwest i think it'll come back one day I but if, i don't know if it'll be the same then it won't be the same it ever nuts but you imagine how it used to be back in the day before Bef- us <laughs> yeah i've heard it's probably even better like before it got even more corporate than it was yeah it was fucking like uh do you know anybody that's ever been to the old Southwest? No, I don't no. know anybody. I know. I've heard stories of people who were like talking about like Austin City Limits when it was like the whole block, like when it was just like a block party. I used to work yeah. with this older lady at Chick fil A and she's a big fan of Stevie Ray Vaughan. Oof. I love him. And she's kind of taller. She's kind of as tall as me, you know, and, and usually uh, for a woman, it's pretty tall, you know, she's kind of <laughs> tall. Yeah. And she told me, she's like, yeah, since I was taller, I would go to all his concerts and when they would throw stuff out, I always caught a lot of it. So she has like a replica uh, hat. Like they used to throw that shit out back in the day. I was like, and we call her Miss Grace. Shout out Miss Grace. I love her <laughs> to death. She still comes by the restaurant. She'll bring me biscuits and I'll hook her up with like, a soda. No way. With a Mexican cool. Coke. I'm like, hell yeah, that's a good trade. I'm like, pull up. That's, but, a, that's, a, that's cool. But yeah, I'm like, she like has him. shit at her house of Stevie Ray Vaughan shows. Yeah. And I just want to go by her house just to see it. You know, I'm just like, that's fucking that historic way, as fuck. That was like way back. Yeah. Way she's a she's a hippie. Yeah. She, she, she goes hard. I love her. That's so cool. He's, he's a fucking, he's one of my favorite artists of all time. I love, I could sit there and just listen. You know, I'm a big, lately since we opened the restaurant, I'll be there by myself a lot, just prepping food. And if I'm not listening to the podcast or a, or a audio book lately, I'll listen to shit like that. You know, I just like Stevie Ray Vaughan or jazz music, or I just got to hear something while I'm working. Something relaxing. 
I like that shit. He's 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 fucking. Shout out to Texas. <laughs> I wish I could have seen him. I, I do too. My my grandpa actually told me like he used to watch him when he was just chilling at the fair. Really? Yeah. Because like, wow. he used to perform at the Texas State Fair a lot. Gotcha. Before he became big. Yeah. And my grandpa's like that age. And he, you know, as the rumor goes, my grandpa seen him play Texas Flood when it started raining at the mm. Texas Fair. That's so bad. That's ass. The rumor. I don't know. You never know. I mean, <laughs> shit. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of people out here that wish you could have seen. <laughs> yeah, for real. For real, man. But shout out to Texas and the culture. Yeah. I really appreciate you coming here, man. Yeah, this was man. good. I liked it. Yeah, shout out a lot to of fun. Give, uh, give, uh, give out your socials, man. if you would, where they can follow you at. Yes, uh, follow us. If anything, man, follow the restaurant, La Chavena LBK. Um follow the culture lounge um at culture lounge lbk um brownberg studios at brownberg studios lbk i think you know on all, all, on all platforms all platforms you, you know people. instagram really just instagram facebook you know we're on instagram facebook culture lounge brownberg studios la chavenia you know come follow us um and follow uh the snake pit there you go people yeah. Jen, anything to say for the people out there yeah, this is a good one. I like this one. The Texas Chainsaw Alchemist. Oh, I don't know if you're yeah. busy this month or not. It's the um, beginning of the month. This will be out next week, so. Yeah, just follow me, Texas Chainsaw Alchemist, and we'll chat about your hair. There you go, people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thank you. We'll see you guys next time. There you go, people. Episode 143. Jose Herrera, J9, La Chavinia Restaurant, The Culture Lounge. Um, Riley, Riley G right next door, so go check them all out. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow me on TikTok. Something new I'm doing. So thank you, and we'll see you all next time.